And let me invite everybody into the group. Okay, everybody, I believe we are here. Let me turn my sound off my phone. I apologize for being a couple minutes late. My computer got logged out and it was forcing me to log back in. And let's see, let me make sure everybody can get invited in. There we go. Now I don't see anybody on here, but I see everybody. Turn your sound down over there. Hey Diane, hey Peggy. And let's see, why am I seeing nobody up here? So how is everybody? A long time no see. Seems like forever. Hey, Diane. He says, Mr. Wilson says, hi. So, tonight, I don't know. I'm going to tell you, it's been a long day. So, I have had a lot of questions on, you know, the dual drapes and the doubles and the triples and that kind of thing. And so... The last time I did a, um, a, a dual drape to show everybody how to do that. And I was doing another one tonight. And I went really, really slow and really into detail with what I was saying and everything. And when I got here and was putting all the little videos together in my presentation, there was no sound. Which means you're going to see me tonight in the upper right hand corner, I'm trying to get my phone to stand up, in the upper right hand corner where I'll be talking because when I actually recorded this, I was saying everything I was doing, only you're not going to hear me. So I'm going to be speaking and trying to remember what it was I said, but we'll get through it. It'll be fine. Um, so tonight, what I'm going to show you, who, who, okay, let's see, Arden, first, first time, welcome, welcome, hey Patricia and Deb, I have to look on here to see who everybody is, and we've got Sheila, um, and Arden, your first time viewing, and I'm not going to have sound. I'm going to have to talk over it, which is the first time we've had that. So try to bear with us on that. Um, I see Cookie on, and Beth, and Barb, Diane. Who else? Um, I think, oh, Suzanne, I see you on. Hey, Megan, I see you as well. So, again, tonight, when I bring the videos up, you will see me in the upper right-hand corner just blah, 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 jabbering away. Um, try not to look at that because the mouth is going to be moving, but I'm going to be saying something different. Hi, Edie, because I don't remember what I said. I was really trying to take it slow and explain everything. So, um it is what it is when when technology fails <laughs> or you fail to plug in a microphone, whatever it is, um, you roll with it, right? So did everybody have a great Thanksgiving? Enjoying your rolling pins. My students are making good things. Whose students are making good things? Let me see. And I can't even get in the comments. There we go. Oh, good. I'm so happy to hear that. Hey, Carla. Okay, so, um, watching from a mini vacation in Asheville. Dion, are you in North Carolina? Why would I? I should know that. I should know that. Okay, so... Quick, fast, I do need to do a little bit of housekeeping. I gotta look at my dates on here. So y'all know that, you know, my family, too much turkey. Hey, I get that. 
Students are cranking out such fun dishes. Oh, that's awesome. Great to hear, Patricia. So, y'all know I've been having some family catastrophes, I guess you might say. Um, my mom has been suffering from COVID and pneumonia, and we've been dealing with her. Well, um, so we are getting ready to fly back to North Carolina. Get this, guys. We are going to fly out on the 13th. We are going to pack up my mom's apartment. Yeah, I, I just did that on the public broadcast. <laughs> um, anyway, pack up my mom's apartment and then turn around the very next day and fly back here with her. So uh, it is going to be crazy fast. Um, we are taking my mom out of the rehab she's at and moving her out here by us. Um, this back and forth, back and forth is just way too much. So this will be our last trip. Um, but on Thursday, the 16th, we won't be live. Uh, I will try to record a video and put it up for you like I did last time we left, um, so that you have something. So I will record that. So if you have things you have questions on or something you want me to um, specifically do a demo on that you're struggling with or something like that, put it in the comments and we'll go through the comments after the live tonight. And I will try to put a video together and a how to, a little fun how to video so that you'll have that um, in place of the live on the 16th. But next week, let me look at this. Today, so next week we'll still be live, but it'll be the 16th. And then of course, the following week, Christmas Eve is the 24th, right? So the following week we'll also be live. The following week we'll also, oh, so we'll be live tonight. One, two, three, three more times. Three more times in December. You'll, you, you'll get tired of me by then. So that'll be good. But the 16th, we will, we will be in North Carolina once again. So all of that to say, Deanne, are you in North Carolina? I know Asheville, my uncle lives in Asheville, and I believe Asheville's like eight hours from where I'm going. Um, so let me start with the first video. There's only where well, there's two and a sneak peek. The first one is, um, let me just start it and I'll walk you through it. Remember, don't watch, don't watch my face up in the top corner because it's not gonna match what's being said.
Now do you hear me? <laughs> it would be helpful if somebody would unmute the microphone. Yes, I stopped the video until I could get the microphone set up so that um, we could all get on the same page. So these videos, when I pre-record like this, when I play them, they automatically mute the, the mic next to me, and I wasn't thinking about that. So we will start this over with it unmuted. Okay, so let's start this over. So what I'm gonna do in this demo is I'm gonna use my farmhouse templates because I've had a lot of people say that they couldn't really see the shape on the website, and I'm going to use a solar eclipse the other thing I'm going to do in this one is I'm going to show you how this all works with our um, banding wheel system where you can set it all up. Hey Cindy, where you can set it all up where it won't slide, won't move, and you can drape your clay over the top. So this is how my templates and forms were designed to work. However, you can also use them to push into foam. You do not have to have the banding wheel system at all. You can just put, put the template down, put the form over it. With the dual drapes, you can use them with or without a rim. Without a rim, you can get that very minimalist look. With a rim, then you can create whatever angle you want. So this is my Sunny Wedges rolling pin. I just thought I would take a very simple, pretty um, design because this farmhouse um, template with the solar form will look very farmhousey, and I think that this design goes so well with that. So I just rolled that on. And now what I'm gonna do is get my banding wheel and I'm gonna show you again how this whole system works together. But again, you don't have to have the banding wheel. You could do it just on a board. Um, so this, this board, I'm just putting my template on. Now I'm gonna set my form on the top and then I'm gonna take my clay once I get this form into the peg this just helps you to not slide. It's not necessary, it's just helpful. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my clay and see if I have enough clay to go over this too deep and get all the way to the bottom, and I do not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this too deep form off, and I'm gonna just get the single because the process is the same. It's just not gonna be as deep, but that's okay. It's the process I wanted to show you here today. You can see on this form that I was using my sunflowers on it before. You can still see the sunflower on there. So if you want your texture to be on the inside of your bowl, you need to make sure that you put the texture face down. If you want your texture on the outside, then leave it face up. I want mine on the inside, so I'm gonna pick this up very carefully, try to keep it from bending too much, and I'm gonna drape it over the form and the template, and I wanna make sure that I get enough clay to um, cover the whole template. And I had to turn my clay to do that, and now I have enough. So, very exciting. I got enough clay to go on this single. And what I'm doing is very, very gently kind of pressing that clay down. You notice I'm not even really putting finger marks in it. And I'm gonna take my red rib and I'm very gently going around this clay. Gently for two reasons. One, I do not want to um, squish my texture. And two, because I'm using a template, I do not want to push that clay clear up against my dual drape form because I want it to have a bit of an angle out to that template. So as you can see, I'm not pushing it all the way in. That's what makes these forms so nice. 
You can push them all the way in and get those straight sides, or you can not push it all the way in and get some angle with a template. Now I'm taking my yellow rib and I wanna make sure to compress the bottom. I am not pushing hard. I'm not squishing my texture. I just wanna compress so that um, I won't have warping. Now I'm just gonna go around lightly with a sponge, take off any little clay crumbs that I created with my rib. And I'm gonna wipe this down and around and then I'm going to um, get my needle tool and I'm going to, oh, you know what? I'm not gonna get my needle tool yet. I'm trying to remember what I did. I'm actually going to put a foot on this. So I'm gonna take my foot maker. Um, you can make this out of a corn cob holder. You can buy one from Jared Pottery Forms. Uh, they do work really well if you want this style of foot. You can um, use a stamp. You can use all kinds of things for a foot. For the one tonight, I'm actually going to cut it with the corn cob holder. Actually, I think the one I'm using right there, I did get from GR Pottery, I believe. And I'm just going to cut in. This was an old piece of slab from even a different texture altogether. And so I'm just gonna cut and lay it up here and see if I have enough to go around. Notice I didn't cut all the way through, so I'm just gonna cut off that little edge with my knife. It's no big deal. I could have left it on and it would have gone right into my clay, but I'm finicky like that, so I went ahead and cut it off. I love this solar form with this farmhouse template. Jen, Jen I agree with you. In fact, if you look this form up, the um, farmhouse template on my website, you will see the most beautiful white dish with some little hollies on it that is posted up there, which was created by Miss Jen Candris herself. Right up there on my website. So, you may find me reaching out to you if you are posting pictures of, some, of um, something you've created with one of my products to ask permission to put it up on my website. Sharon, you're totally fine being late, that's okay. Shelves in the studio is important, very important. And the replay is always here and available. So what I'm doing is just lining out to make sure I have enough clay for a foot and then I'm just going to cut off some of this excess to get it out of my way. I want to be able to lay my foot pieces down so that I can um, slip and score and slip them. I don't know why they say slip and score because you always score first. So I'm going to score this real quick and um, I'm gonna score all of it and then I'm gonna go around and score around the edges my phone's not catching up with the comments here and attach this foot are you hearing it now uh, oh my backup person isn't paying attention Okay, so now I'm scoring around the edge, and as you notice, that I can't um, <laughs> stay in a straight line, but it doesn't matter. You'll never see that, and that's the beauty of this, because um, you'll wipe out those lines and nobody will ever see it anyway. So right now I'm just adding uh, a little vinegar water. You can use slip, you can use magic water, you can use just water, you can use whatever you happen to have. And that's what I happen to have in my studio at the moment. This is really different. It's doing a sound over when I actually recorded all this, not knowing that my mic was turned off today, all day. 
but that's okay. We'll get through, right? Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is um, flip these pieces of foot over and set them up here where they belong and get them lined up. And for some reason today, these feet were so slippery. Oh my gosh, I was slipping all over the place. So, I do overlap, and then when I get ready to cut this, I will take my knife and I will cut these at an angle so that when I go to put them together, they fit better. I do slip and score between the cut just um, to make sure it does bond. This clay is so wet that I probably wouldn't even have to do that, but when you put this much work into something, you don't want to have a foot flopping off, that's for sure. So now I'm just going to cut the other side. And you watch here in a second as I start spinning this around to connect this foot, it just starts sliding everywhere. I don't know if my vinegar water was getting moldy and slippery or what, but this thing just slipped everywhere. But just stay at it because um, it all comes out in the end and it looks great. See that? Slip, slip. Um, and it'll do that. I'll do that several times. And I've not ever had one slip like that. So I don't know what the deal was. But I stayed with it and got all of the um, excess uh, score marks out of there and got this foot on nice and gorgeous. I might speed this up just a bit so you can kind of get to the finished part. You don't want to have to watch all of this. Okay, now look. Now we're getting to the end and look how pretty this is. Okay, now I'm gonna go for the one on the inside. Anytime you have a dish that um, has a lot of open space in the middle, you have to worry about it slumping or sagging in the middle. So if you just put a foot in the middle, it'll look better. And it will also keep it from sagging in the middle. So I'm just going to attach this foot just like I did the outside foot. So we'll speed this up a hair. What's so funny? Oh, are you guys laughing at me in the upper right hand corner when I was speeding that up? I was just bouncing all over. I will tell you, I was giving every little detail today on these, but look how pretty that foot is, the double foot. So what I do is I'll take a template and brown side down, I'll place on top and lightly tap it just to make sure it's all in there and um, make sure it's all pressed down and um, now what I'm going to do is actually go around and bring my knife. I don't know why I picked up my knife. I typically never use my knife. I use my needle tool um, to go around the template. These templates being a quarter inch thick, your knife glides around. I just work better with my needle tool. And... Um, Right about there, I said, what am I doing with this knife? Let me grab my needle tool, which is what I did. Now on this one, I just wanted to show you, you do not have to try to spin this and get everything off all in one long cut. You can look to the side, make sure you're staying on the template, take off pieces at a time, whatever you feel comfortable with. 
I've, I've had questions, and the reason I'm addressing this is I've had questions of, well, do you have to go all the way around at once? Can you just take little pieces off? So I'm showing you that 100% you can take off just little pieces. If you miss something, you can go back, but don't rush it. If you rush it, you could easily slip a pedal and go up over the top. Now, once you get that all cut, it's very easy for you to take your sponge and kind of sponge around the bottom of that. I slid, I slid the clay. Um, but you can go right around the bottom of that. And you notice how I have the angle to this? It's not flat and up against the walls. Since I have a template on there, I obviously didn't want it flat. That, I went back, I had missed a little piece, so I went back and took care of that. And I also like to take my sponge and kind of swoop it into those little curves. Um, if you can see that I'm kind of taking that sponge and going swoop, swoop in those little curvy areas, I like to um, make them a little more pronounced. I think it looks really good. So now I'm going to just stamp it with my Maker's Mark and I am going to go set this aside and let it, um, let it dry a little bit once it can stand up on its own. Then I'll bring it back and flip it over. So that, that was hard trying to remember what I was saying. I had to kind of hold my hand up and not look at myself in the upper corner either because <laughs> what that Sharon was saying and what this Sharon was trying to say weren't the same things. But that's, that's really how you use the um, banding wheel system. Locking in your template, locking in your form, putting your design over the top. And let me show you, where are we at on time? We're doing good. Did anybody, let's see. Did anybody have any questions to this point before I go to the next one? Oh, Deb, you're still saving up for some of the deep drapes. Yeah, the deep drapes are really good. You do have to, they do take a little finessing and you do have to learn your timing um, on pressing the clay up to the sides and when to flip them over and pull that out. Um, one or two times and you'll have it down. All right, so let me go ahead and show you when I flip this over because we really only, I forget, we only go to 615. So let me show you the finished look of this. And I wanna tell you it is, that rolling pin with this shape is amazing. Yes, every new video will mute. Um, so what I'm gonna do is take a template and I'm going to flip this over. You guys should hear me now. The videos auto mute and I have to unmute them. So once I take this off, I just pull off my template and I knocked it right into the wall if you notice that. And now I'm just gonna pop this form out look at that 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 rolling pin do you see how it just goes right with the curve of this farmhouse template so this farmhouse whether you use a rolling pin whether you use just glaze and a few um Underglaze transfers, overglaze transfers, anything you want to use, stamps. Um, yeah, it does. It almost looks 3D. But I will tell you why that is, Jen. Because this rolling pin was 
right off the machine and I didn't wipe it down so that dark that you see is still the wood sap. I have tried and tried to keep that, to like glaze over, clear glaze over and keep that shadowy look. It burns off in the kiln. There is, I've tried. So now I don't even bother because that brown on there, that'll go away. And once I've used the pen a few times, it won't show like that anymore either. So here, what I'm telling you, trying to explain is the farmhouse template I used was a 12 and a half. The drape form, single drape form that I used was a nine and a half. Nine and a half. Yes. 12 and a half with a nine. Nine, right? Yeah, 12 and a half. 12 with a nine and a half. There you go. So it was a 12 inch template with a nine and a half inch form. Um, if you wanted the double or the triple, you would still use the nine inch, the nine and a half inch, sorry, but you just need a bigger piece of clay because when you come down and over the top, that piece of clay I had was not enough to fit across it with a double. So just make yourself a bigger piece of clay, but your template and your form would still stay the same size. The only difference is your dish would be deeper. And did you see how deep that dish was anyway, even just with the single, because I had it, I had it come kind of like this to the template. So any questions over that? Oh, and by the way, if you have, um, <coughs> if you do have the GR Pottery wah system that they use on the wheel, we, with Jeff's permission, have an adapter. It's the round with our peg. Our peg is thicker and taller because our templates are much thicker. So if you already have the wah system, you can just purchase our peg. It's only like $4.99. And it will fit inside the wall and it will allow you the bigger peg to fit on our templates and our forms and then um what else did i need to tell that's about it on that so i do want to show you just real quick let's see do i have any questions i don't Technical difficulties tonight. My phone is really acting up and I can't even see comments. Oh, there they are. Okay, so I'm gonna show you, if you guys are in my Slab to Fab group. Oh, thank you, Deanne. So if you're in my Slab to Fab group, you're gonna see this again tonight, but I'm gonna show you guys um, just quick, fast, because I added it to this one accidentally. I'm going to show you um, a real fun design that's coming soon. So I'm going to show this just real fast before we go. And I remembered to unmute. Um, so in the comments, in the comments, when you see this put together, I have, if you're in my Slab to Fab group, I have two classes that I'm making with this. Two different things that I'm making. So, um, if you're here and you're in my Slab to Fab group, things to come. If you're, just, if you're not in the Slab to Fab group, go ahead and, and answer or put in the comments what you think could be made with this squirrel. And I will tell you, in my family, well, if you're in the Slab to Fab group, you're gonna hear this story twice. But I was creating this because I have, um, I'm making some Christmas presents and one is gonna be for my daughter and we have a standing joke in my family with a squirrel because when she was in college, she called me early one morning and had wrecked her car. And she said she was swerving to avoid a squirrel. Now this is a girl that's been raised in the country and knows better than to swerve for an animal, but um, she swirled, swerved 
<laughs> saved the squirrel, destroyed the car, and ever since, whenever anybody in the family sees a squirrel, they look at her and go, squirrel! So I'm making a Christmas present with the squirrel, and in doing that, I came up with two different classes. So if you can think of things that you could do with this, put it in the comments. I'd love to hear what your ideas are. And wait till you see what goes on top of this squirrel, guys. It is so cute. Anybody have any comments on things you could make with this? Now think outside the box here for a second. This is just a quickie sneak peek video. I'm not actually making anything with this. I'm just showing you what it looks like. And um, wait till you see what's coming that goes with this. Now, well, wait, I'll let you, I'll let it come before I say anything. Isn't he so cute? A dish that holds nuts, that, that, yes, very much so. That is not the class I'm making, but that is a good idea to make one. Look at that stencil that goes with him or her. Now, you don't even have to use the matching template. You could actually take this stencil and put it in a dish, a platter, all kinds of different things. Um, the classes I'm making actually use the template, but um, you don't have to. But I just wanted to show you a sneak peek we're going to run out of time here in a second. I just wanted to show you a sneak peek. You could take these flowers and you could, you could glaze each one of these flowers individually. Or what I'm going to show you is I'm just going to slap glaze across the whole thing and just show you what it looks like glazed. And I'm not going to, I'm going to speed this up a little bit just till I get the glaze on. Now, I don't normally speed up my videos, but this was just a quickie to show you. Oops. Watch this. Look at this. Is that not gorgeous? You could even give him an eyeball. You could give him an eyeball if you wanted. Okay. I just wanted to show you that. Um, no worries, Rachel. Anyway, I just wanted to show you a sneak peek of that um, because the, um, the video wasn't all that long for the farmhouse and the oval. Any questions before we go? Who? Aha, well that's okay. So the squirrel has a template and a stencil. You do not have to use the template. You could use that stencil on anything. You also do not have to use that stencil. You could use the template. You could um, texture the template. You can do all kinds of things either way. Um, it's just something that's coming soon. And so I just threw it, um, threw a little video together while I was making one today. How do we get in the Slab to Fab group? Who asked that? Oh, Jennifer. So Jennifer, the Slab the Fab Society is my paid membership group. Uh, we just had a founders, we opened it up to founders only in June. And um, once I get a little more content up there, we will be opening it up to some more members, but that will be probably after the first of the year. Um, who said their nickname is Squirrel? Oh, Rachel. Oh, that's so funny. You'll have to, 
come over in the slab group and hear the story of why I'm making a squirrel. But we will be opening it up to members. So if you're interested in that, send me an email, <coughs> info at SharonHoppyDesigns.com and uh, I will put you on the list to be notified. But again, I, I wanted to get a little more content up there and then we'll be, um, then we will be um, opening it up a little more. That's it for tonight. We will see you next week.